Hey, what up, y'all? This is Scotty D from Thagolovers.net, and it's uh, Friday the 20th. I got my homie Prozac. He's in uh, San Diego on the Something Else Tour. Uh, what's up, Prozac? Yo, what up, Scotty? So, Prozac, we've got a brand new album, uh, We All Fall Down, that you just released. 15 tracks, uh, something completely different than what you've been, in my opinion, than what you've ever done. Uh, what what is the what is the uh, the fan response been so far? Well, the response has been really good, man. Um, you know, one of the things I've been the most proud of with this release is that uh, the consensus has been, uh, you know, from the fans on the road and online that uh, they they think this record topped the last record, Paranormal. And uh, I don't know, that's one of the best things you could hear when you drop a new record is that it was you know better than your previous. And uh, uh, people are really feeling it, man. I'm excited about it. Well, man, it's definitely, it, it, like I said, it's definitely different. But I, I will have to, I'll have to agree with what you just said. It, it it's, you're just ever, ever growing as an artist, and this, this, this is a, this we all fall down just shows it. So, um, so one of the things that I've noticed is that, uh, mo- more of the songs have a melodic kind of politically and socially charged uh, theme to them. In the seven interview that he just did with the with the strange music blogs, he said that. Most of your previous releases had some tracks on it that were a few years old that would have just been kind of sitting on the shelf, and that were that you just included in the albums, you know, paranormal uh, stuff like that. Uh, he said this one kind of came together more more organically. Uh, was, was there a big reason for that change? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, the last uh, the last record I did, paranormal, there definitely was. Uh, tracks on that on that record. Um, some of those beats were a few years old because I buy music that I like, and sometimes it takes me a while to get uh, you know to knocking those tracks out. Mm-hmm. And uh, this record, what was different was me and Seven sat down and we discussed and we talked about every single track uh, before he made any music. So basically, all the music that you hear for the record uh, was made for the content and the subject matter of the song. Uh, it wasn't just, here's a, a CD full of beats, and choose what you like. Sure. They, they were only made for this record. Okay. So, just to clarify, when he said that the songs were old, he didn't mean that your the, the lyrics and everything else were were already already recorded. He just meant the beats were, were, were old and uh, were older and stuff that you previously purchased. Exactly. Okay, I got you. So, how was it work? Seven is obviously insanely talented. Um, How was it working with him? Well, I mean, Seven, like, I already knew that his, you know, beats were amazing. And, uh, you know, he's one of the best producers I've ever heard in my life. Yeah. Uh, But what was different about this that gave me even more respect for the guy is we would sit down and we would talk about the track, you know, like, okay, I want to do this track. It's called Blood Paved Road. This is the subject matter. Uh, This is what I'm going for. This is the type of sound that I want. I want an acoustic guitar. I'm looking for, you know, drums kind of like this. And he would just, you know, immediately pick up on what I was saying and what, you know, and we would give each other references, examples, get on the same page, um, you know, real thoroughly uh, speaking to each other. And then all of a sudden within, you know, uh, a few hours or the next day, it would pop up in my email, and the the beat downloads and opens up, and it's exactly what I heard in my head, if not better. Wow, so so that's that's something different. You being on the same wavelength with another person than than just hearing a beat and knowing what you're gonna uh, what you, what the subject of, the, of it's gonna be already. It's more exactly. It's more custom yeah, made for the. For uh, most of the albums in the past, I've just selected music from producers that I like and mm-hmm. just. Uh, you know, wrote what came to me uh, on those tracks. But what's really great about this record, particularly, it's a uh, it's a concept record. And uh, again, you know, like you said and like Seven said, it was uh, it just it's really it's an organic record. I mean, it's like custom made through and through uh, all the way. Mm-hmm. So, do you see you and uh, Seven working together in the future? Oh yeah, there's no doubt about it. Um, I. There's, yeah, there's no doubt about it. If I had it my way, that's who's going to produce all my records. Nice. Okay. Some of your harder hitting tracks on the album are Three, Two, One, and Vendetta. Uh, they seem like they could be new tracks to bust a death wall out for. Uh, have you performed those live yet? 
Uh, no, I actually, I haven't, <clears throat> I haven't yet. Um, I come out on stage to uh, track 10 off We All Fall Down, which is called Distress Call. But uh, I'm saving, uh, you know, using We All Fall Down material for more like halfway through the tour when people know the record better. I gotcha, I gotcha. You told me that your album sales on, the, on these national tours with Tech uh, do really well, especially uh, like right after your set, people kind of flock to the, the merch booths. Um, do you attribute a lot of your success to your live show? Um, you know, I think so. I think, uh, you know, my, you know, this is a, a day and age, bro, where people don't really got to buy music. Um, and it's like, you got to take it an extra step, you know, for them to say, okay, well, you know, I spent 30 bucks or whatever, bought a concert ticket, got to buy some drinks, this and that. I'm at a show. Why should I buy your record out of everybody here? You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Um, and that's putting on the best performance you're capable of. And I think furthermore, it's taking it another step and being available out there in the audience all night. Uh, not many people want to do that. Artists, you know, sitting out there in the crowd and shaking four or five hundred hands and uh, just putting in those hours and all of that time. But um, that's where we're at nowadays, man. Like, uh, you know, people don't really have to buy music straight up. You know, obviously it's available to just you know, download, steal whenever they want. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's it's a different game. So it's like you got to really put in the time and show them the respect. Uh, you know, and and you got you got to grind and really hustle and be sincere and go out there and do your thing. And that's what I do nightly. Definitely. If if any of you guys out there listening have never seen Prozac perform or either with Tech or on a solo tour, whether there's a hundred people out there, or or ten thousand at the gathering, that you you'll never not see him in the audience afterwards. He just yeah yeah. Yes. I mean, literally never. I mean, with the exception of you know uh, having to leave the show because of a medical emergency or something. You know, I mean, like right, a couple sure, of times sure. like in my life. But it's like that's the respect, man, and it is what it is. You know, like um, you know, like years ago, before even you know before I ever started rapping. It was a different game. Uh, it was very hard to have a record in stores, and there wasn't a lot of people really doing it. Um, and selling music was really fucking easy. Uh, but now it's just like, you know, you've seen the progression just in the last 10 years alone. Um, it's, you know, it's very hard to move units. I mean, that's why, you know, people, uh, the, you know, the top mainstream rapper 15 years ago would, you know, sell $3 million his first week. Now Jay Z, you know, and Kanye, whatever the fuck these people are, you know, the pinnacle, as so they say, uh, struggle to barely even do platinum in the first week. That's right. almost impossible. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's just the market nowadays, and you know, and that analogy trickles down to the underground too. It's the same thing, you know. It's just, uh, you know, but it's kind of cool. It's an advantage for the fans. That's how I look at it. It's like, motherfucker, you want my money? You want me to support you and buy your product? You know, do something to do something extra. Go the extra mile. Mm-hmm. Show me you care. Bottom line. No um, doubt. And for artists that don't give a fuck and don't want to do that, it sucks for them. For people right. like me, it's a benefit. So I just mentioned the gathering. Um, you you weren't there for the first time, and 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 as as long as I can remember, uh, were, were you asked to play this year? Um. Yeah, I was asked to play, but the circumstances just you know didn't work out okay but you have no you you, you did, would definitely uh, go and play again though right oh yeah i mean it's always an honor to play the gathering it's just you know um just you know between uh between music and film and stuff it's just you know you, i don't really get a a lot of downtime and stuff and when i'm not doing this i'm working on the you know, on the movies and stuff, and that's about the only time I have to do those when I'm not, you know, on tour or, or doing something with my label. Right, right. All yeah. right, so, so so let's get back to We All Fall Down. Um, I might be mistaken, but the, the, the track Nowhere to Run, it seems to be the first track that I've heard of you that has kind of a southern rock type feel. Uh, what inspired you to do the track like that? Well, um, basically... You know, me and Seven were, you know, talking one night about influences and, you know, what kind of music I listen to. And, you know, you're always surprised when you ask somebody that because, you know, and it, this goes for anybody that any of us know uh, out there, 
you know, you and I, people listening, you know, one of your homies or whatever, you, they'll be like, you'll look through their iPod and you'll be like, what? What uh-huh. the fuck? You know what I mean? And so he's asking me, you know, what do I like? And I'm spitting off all kinds of names, you know, rock bands, Slayer, um, all these names and shit, and Johnny Cash popped up. And he's like, you listen to Johnny Cash? I'm like, bro, Johnny Cash is a fucking legend. Like, mm-hmm. fuck yeah, I listen to Johnny Cash. And he's like, bro, you know, like, we should do something like that. You know, we should do, you know, some, you know, down south country-esque type of sound, you know, and add a little bit of a vibe to that. And I was like, yeah, I'm all about it because, you know, a lot of shit that I do is, you know, virtually spoken poetry in a way. And to me, Johnny Cash was very, very much a poet in his own way. And so he uh, was like, well, let me give that a try, you know. And so he played it for me, and, you know, that hook came to my head right away. And then Rob Rebeck added that hook and wrote a little bit on there as well. And then Rob was like, you know, we were both feeling it. I'm like, Rob, you can sing this, bro. This is you. You know what I mean? Like, I want you to sound like some dude, you know, sitting on his porch in the South. I want you to sound like an old man on the porch strumming his guitar and just, you know, watching the world come to an end far in the background, Mm -hmm. you know, far in the distance. He's watching the mushroom cloud, bro, you know, (laughs) capture that. And he just nailed it, dude. And it was, it was fucking great. You know what I'm saying? It's definitely a dope track. Um, yeah, I like Southern rock music, like rehab and everything. Um, and speaking to them, Dude, for Paran- yeah, rehab for Paran- is excellent. Absolutely. For for paranormal, you were supposed to have a Danny Boone track on there. Did that ever happen? Um, it did happen actually. It's just uh, it's not released. Um, but uh, it'll come out eventually. Okay, so you just mentioned um, going through a homie's iPod or whatever and saying what the fuck. So, what kind of guilty pleasures do you have on your iPod? Well, um, my iPod consists of, um, well, Black Sabbath, Slayer, uh, Pantera, Sepultura, uh, Rehab, what else? Come on, Actually, here, well, I'm on my man. iPhone. You got some Miley Cyrus on there or something? All right, I'm scrolling through it right now. All <laughs> albums. Um, I got Johnny Cash, Marilyn Manson, Guns N' Roses, Stone Sour, uh, Jay Z, I got Creedence Clearwater Revival. There you go. I've got Megadeth. Uh, I've got some Brother Lynch Hung, The Doors, Nine Inch Nails, Serge Tankian, Rage Against the Machine, uh, a fuck ton of Corn albums, mm-hmm. uh, every rehab record, uh, System of a Down, Slipknot. What else do I got here? <laughs> but nothing. I got some nothing, old school Metallica. I got the Misfits. I've got Ramstein. Uh, what else? I got the Omen soundtrack. I've got the Queen of the Dam soundtrack. Well, that's that's different. Uh, Scars on Broadway. Uh, White Zombie, Rob Zombie. Uh, you're going to laugh at this. Here's a guilty pleasure. A couple of tracks of the Grateful Dead. Hey, nothing wrong uh, with that. Mushroom Head. And the list goes on. Nice. Leonard Skinner. You mentioned that you had Jay-Z on there, uh, and we had also talked about Jay-Z and Kanye just a minute ago. Uh, what are your current thoughts on the state of hip-hop today, like mainstream hip-hop? Well, well honestly, I only have one Jay-Z song, and the real reason behind that is Rick Rubin is one of my favorite producers of all time. Mm-hmm. And uh, he, he produced this particular song, and I just really like the beat because the beat reminds me of uh, the good old days of the Beastie Boys and that whole era uh, when I was a kid listening to hip-hop. So that's kind of really what it is. It's a beat that I'd kill for. But um, the current state of hip-hop sucks dick. Um, just putting it real bluntly, I'm around the shit all day long at these venues. It's playing. Uh, DJs are playing, the, you know, the whatever the, you know, the, the mixtapes or the top mixtapes and all that shit. And all I hear about is just literally people bragging about how much money they got and how many bitches suck their dick and what kind of cars they have and how five, six racks means nothing, and they drop it at the bar, <laughs> and blah, blah, blah. So it's like, it's really funny. Like, uh, people sometimes people will be like, damn, man, you know, why aren't you in double XL? Oh, that's fucked up. You're on Strange, and you're not on MTV or BET. It's like, I don't want to be, motherfucker. Like, listen to the music I make. Do you think I'm trying to target that? Like, of course I'm not on there. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't take a, a genius to figure out that I'm 
doing the opposite of those things. So they would never play my shit. Uh, and obviously I don't want it or I would be trying to create music that would fit over there. Um, I just do, and it's not like I'm all about underground either because you know what, dog? Like I don't represent anything but myself and my opinions, period. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm not like, oh, yo, I'm underground. Well, I'm not anything. I'm Prozac. I'm me and I do what I do and I write what I write. So it's not about keeping it underground. I just make the music that I want, and the music that I want just so happens to have nothing in common with materialistic, faggotry, mainstream hip hop, mm-hmm. which to me is really pathetic, bro. Like, I don't know. I think it's sad. I think a bunch of stale ass people want to live vicariously through these uh, fictional hip hop icons that don't even have the money they say they do or the cars that they rented for their video. And it's, I don't know. I think it speaks a lot about the genre itself. And uh, if that shit can be number one and if that shit's the hottest thing out, then I uh, definitely don't want to be a part of that <laughs> that did, particular scene, you know? But does it discourage you that stuff like more heartfelt, compassionate music like yours doesn't get played on the radio or MTV, whereas people who talk no, about mindless no. party shit? It, it, it absolutely does not discourage me, bro, because it's human nature. That's the problem. It's the society that we live in now. It's the world that we live in today. That's what it's about. Everybody wants to be a fucking rock star. Everybody wants to be famous. You know what I'm saying? Like, why do you think social media uh, or social networking, rather, is so popular? Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying, like, hey, if you have a Facebook, you know, you had your ego trip. And I'm not saying that at all. But But the thing is, you know, we all have that friend that puts up 8 million pictures a day and, you know what I'm saying? I'm over here, and I just bought this, and I'm I'm doing that. And, you know, it's just kind of like, bro, you know what I mean? Like, what happened to just the good old days, you know what I'm saying, where, like, people didn't have to talk about what they bought or how much this costs or where they're at, and they just spent this on this. Like, why is that shit so important? I guess I don't understand. I, I don't know. I'm on national tours. I'm on million-dollar tour buses. Um, and I wear a black T-shirt, some shorts, and a pair of sneakers. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess I missed the I missed the memo on the, you know, what I'm supposed to look like or <laughs> what I'm supposed to, you know, do to fit into that world. But I never will. I've got no intentions on doing it. You know, just period, bro. It's sad. You know. Obviously, people know about the Seeker slash Haunting DVD series. Uh, last year yeah. you had a haunting on Potter Street uh, It debuted shortly after Halloween What's next for that series? Well, uh, Haunting on Potter Street As you said, you know, was the last film Came out last year uh, We've since shot a film called A Haunting in Saginaw, Michigan And uh, the tour ends on November 2nd And I will be back uh, In Saginaw the 7th And I will be shooting another film uh, From November 10th uh, To December 7th which will be the fifth uh, installment of the Haunting series. Okay, are there any plans to release... I, I know that people who got to see the uh, Haunting on Potter Street uh, at, at the debut got a DVD of it. Um, but are there any plans to put it out on DVD for national release? Uh, well, yeah, that's that's definitely the plan, bro. Um, actually, uh, recently I just shot a pilot uh, for a reality show. Um, I'm working with a guy named John Sullivan, Uh, out in L.A., Uh, he was co-director and producer of Obama's America 2016, uh, was the number one independent film of last year, um, and one of the highest uh, grossing political documentaries uh, ever. So um, he took a real big interest in what I'm doing, and, uh, you know, he's actually the executive producer of the show, and him and his crew uh, flew out from L.A., and we shot a pilot uh, for it. And it's actually... uh, it's it's different than what I'm doing uh, currently, just in the vein that it's not just paranormal investigation, uh, but it's it's a reality uh, it's reality TV based um, format instead of 90 minute documentary. But the pilot shot and it's being shot currently, and uh, this is also the same guy that's going to help me get all the uh, past films onto Netflix as well as distribution. Oh, that's very cool. That that's huge for you, right? <clears throat> yeah, because you know we, uh, you know the product is the projects are really good uh, that we've been working on. We, you know, we pack in four or five thousand people a year to see the film in a live audience, 
uh, if you go on YouTube, you can actually see these crowds and, and these premieres, uh, footage of them. And uh, it's just, you know, it's time. I mean, we're, uh, you know, we're doing the impossible uh, in the city where I live. It's a population of 44,000 people, and we're drawing, you know, 10% of the population to come see the film. Unbelievable, um, yeah. So if we can do that, you know, it's, it's fair to say that it's ready for a national uh, status. So, but, you know, I'm, I got no, uh, I'm not putting my eggs in one basket. I'm not putting my whole heart on the line. I understand that this business can be uh, fickle. Uh, that's a weird random word, but I'll use that word, fickle. <laughs> that uh, works. You never know. It could go nowhere or it could go everywhere. So, but it's a blessing, whatever does happen. And uh, just getting to know John and him taking this much interest in what I'm doing is, uh, I feel lucky just on that standpoint. So Definitely. While we're on the subject of, uh, of, of, of films, I, I think that we've talked in the past about you having a, a full-length movie that you've got it maybe possibly scripted. Is that, is that? Oh, dude, it kills me even talking about it, bro. I wrote a, I wrote a, well, I wrote, I've written many scripts for mm -hmm. that matter, but there's one in particular that I just know that this is the one. That's it. You know what I mean? This is by far the best thing I've ever written. It's, the, it's solid. It's airtight. Um, it makes the most sense to shoot this. Uh, but I want to make sure I've got the right crew, the right budget, um, and I want to be in the right frame of mind when I, uh, when I go into shooting it. So, uh, but I'm ready. You know what I'm saying? I believe that that really, truly will be shot in the next uh, year and a half. Nice. So, Are we talking a horror movie then, or, or can you even say anything about it? Um, I would, I would actually call it more of a, uh, more of a suspense thriller. Okay. Well, shit, man, you got me hyped about it. Yeah, I mean, if you want, Scotty, I mean, like, I'll, I'll literally send you the script, you know, if you got time to, to read it, so. Oh, hell yeah, I'll, t I'll take a look. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it wouldn't be a Prozac interview without asking about some Project Dead Man. Have you... Uh, For sure. <laughs> is there... Is there... Have you and Mikey Clark talked any, uh, recently about, about resurrecting this, that franchise? <laughs> We definitely, we talk about it, you know, we we have one of those drunken conversations every six months, you know, oh man, we got to do this, and we it should be like this, and this is how we need to do it, and you know, we're, we, we, you know, we go off and we agree on it, we agree on all of it, we get all, you know, hype, and we go down memory lane with it, and it's, you know, and then it just kind of, you know, just goes by the wayside again to the next conversation. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Mike's busy as fuck. He's doing the Kid Rock thing. He's doing the ICP thing. I'm doing my own thing. Um, and, you know, it's really hard to, you know, to really do that or dedicate the time to that. Not to mention if it's that difficult for us to come together and record it, you know, we would almost never be able to tour it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just one of those things. But um, if I had it my way... I think, you know, realistically, me and Mike Clark should do an EP, a brand new EP, and just, you know, put it online for the Project Dead Man fans that we created uh, that want, you know, to hear more. I think that alone would just be a great thing. I think that'd be super fucking dope and, and yeah, extremely so appreciated. Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah I, I, we'd kill it too, you know, just start off with an EP and maybe, you know, we get to that point and we decide, ah, let's do, you know, let's do some more, let's make it a full length, but, um, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I think it's safe to say that, that Halloween is probably your favorite t favorite holiday of the year. Am I wrong about that? Oh, yeah, dude. Halloween is by far my favorite holiday of the year. All right, so so I know that you're on the Something Else tour through Halloween, through through November 2nd. So uh, is there, are there any plans or traditions that you, you'll be missing out on this year? Oh, uh, that's the worst question you could ever ask me in my life, because you just put a dagger in my heart. <laughs> Sorry, man. Uh, it looks like this year I have to cancel my annual movie premiere for A Haunting in Saginaw, Michigan, because I had to be on this tour. And don't get me wrong, I absolutely love the fact that I'm out here, and this is also what I do, and this is what I did before films. Uh, but uh, I have to... Uh, you know, it's 99%, you know, at this point positive that the premiere uh, will not be happening. Uh, this would have been our fourth year, uh, sold out every year, um, you know. So it is what it is, though. You know, you got to do what you got to do. 
and uh, you can't be in two places at once. And, uh, you know, it's bound to happen eventually when you've got two different, uh, you know, things that you do. Eventually, the scheduling is going to collide. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Right, right. But we will yeah. eventually see a haunting in Saginaw, Michigan, though, right? Oh, yeah. It's shot, and it's edited, and it's finished. You okay. know, it's done. It's just uh, typically what we do is we release the film uh, at the premiere, uh, and then it's available afterward. So we'll just have to see. Okay. All right. So in my opinion, I feel like you're st- you're still seeing a strange music black sheep, like whether it's being passed over on uh, on much album promotion because you've got more of a built-in fan base that'll always sell records. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Um, you know, it, it's hard to to speak on that. You know, from a you know, any direct answer standpoint, I've never had a conversation with strange, like, you know, uh, I don't get all the opportunities as, you know, other people or, you know, this or that. But at the same time, I'm, I'm aware that, um, a lot of that, I, you know, to a degree I bring on myself by, uh, you know, writing and recording the type of music that I do, um, uh, stops them from, you know, being able to, uh, submit me to a lot of these places. Um, you know, you look at some of the acts on the label and, and what type of music they're making, and, you know, how it's marketed and, and what lane that they're in. And then you look at what I'm doing and, and, you know, what lane I'm in. It's like you got double XL or Vibe showing up to a show and I'm splitting the crowd and doing a wall of death and, and, and going fucking ballistic. And they're like, what the fuck is this? Like, you know, that's not what these guys are listening to or want to, you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. they're automatically, they respect, you know, the response and the record sales. Like, damn. But, you know, these publications aren't into it. No, oh, I hear you. All right, let, let, me, uh, let me ask you this. Earlier today, just a couple of hours ago, you got, you did a, a podcast with Strange Music, and you said that you got two tattoos in Vegas yesterday. What are they of? Yes. Um, well... Finally, I had to get my own logo, uh, the Skull Clan, Skull and Shovels logo. Um, and then after that, I got some uh, hieroglyphics um, added to uh, Egyptian uh, tattoos that I have that pretty much takes up the right side of my body. Nice. Hey, what, so, what would you say your favorite piece was? Uh, that I've ever gotten? Yes. Well, let me think about that. Um Probably my portrait of Edgar Allan Poe. Nice. And where is that or at? Hitchcock. Don't um, say it's your on ass. My, it's on my left leg, and I, uh, on my other leg, I've got Hitchcock. I've also got a portrait of Vincent Price. Um, I got a lot of tats. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> have Have you officially? I haven't heard you refer to yourself as it in a while. So, have you officially dropped the Hitchcock of hip hop moniker? No, no, it's not that I dropped it. It's just. You know, I'm not, like, trying to just, you know, that's, you know, ultimately not just, you know, who I am or what my name is or whatever. It's just, uh, you know, something that uh, it actually came together because uh, years back, and you may remember this, uh, Murder Dog did a piece and they referred to, uh, referred to me as the Stephen King of rap, um, which I thought was pretty cool, but it definitely didn't have a ring to it. And uh, I was like, you know, shit, I, I'm more like the Hitchcock of rap. And then right after that, I was like, Hitchcock of Hip Hop, you know. And then yeah. uh, a couple years later, some friends of mine were playing a Biggie record, and we heard Biggie say uh, this rap Alfred Hitchcock. So I was like, damn, okay, well, Biggie already said it, uh, you know, a little bit differently. but So it's not like it's, you know, purely original, but I think it sure as hell fits what I do. No doubt. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, well, Both that... with the size and the stature and, you know what I'm saying? Like, it just, it just fits. And will that album ever see the light of day, the Hitchcock of Hip Hop? The uh, Hitchcock of Hip Hop record, I don't know if that'll ever see the light of day or not. Um, that remains to be seen. Okay. We'll see. It's just pending circumstances. Okay, okay. Um, okay, I'm about to wrap this up, but but I want to find out what's next on the list for Prozac. Well, what's next after this? Um, get off this tour, shoot the fifth haunting movie, go into the studio and get rid of the burden that I've had on me as far as, um, you know, getting out these messages that I have felt compelled to, to, you know, to get out there with, uh, you know, just this type of subject matter. Uh, I feel like, you know, I, I had an obligation to put certain 
uh, words out there and, and vibes and messages. And uh, like I said, I, you know, obligated is the best way to put it uh, for the greater good. And I, I feel like I've accomplished that now. And I just kind of want to go back to, uh, you know, just the next level. And that to me would be uh, an album of just, you know, pure flow, pure energy and uh, out of the darkness. Nice. Well, I, I know I'm not the only one to, uh, that feels this way, but uh, we're, we're definitely looking forward to whatever you have coming up next. Um, uh, we All Fall Down is is the shit, if you haven't gotten it. Um, my, mine just came in the mail today, but of course I got an advanced copy. Thank you, Mr. Prozac. And, uh, and uh, yeah, that's that's going to wrap it up for us at Figal Lovers today. So um, anything you'd like to say before we wrap up? Um, just, you know, thanks to everybody out there that supports takes their time to listen to this and uh supports good music and everyone's good music as long as it's good fuck yeah no doubt all right y'all this is scotty d from figalovers.net with prozac and we're out